the radio news winner, Mr. Martin Ogranski. The capacity of Martin Ogranski in getting the story behind the story was remarkably distinctive in 1952. In this uneasy period of insecurity and fear, he has consistently and with rare courage worked for the preservation of basic values in our democratic system. His penetrating analysis of highly controversial matters reflects an understanding of the fundamentals of freedom and a concern for the rights and dignity of the individual citizen. Mr. Agronsky has earned the confidence of his listeners as a skillful and competent reporter as evidenced by his performance in covering the 1952 National Political Conventions and the election night returns. Good going. Thank you. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I've been allotted two minutes to be profound and perspicacious. And upon consulting Mr. Webster's dictionary, I find the allotment not only generous, but extravagantly so. For two seconds would suffice to exhaust my personal mastery of profundity and perspicacity. I should like to say first that the Peabody Award is an honor which, like all other reporters in this industry, I value above all others. And its value is much heightened, too, by the caliber of those reporters who have preceded me. I am proud indeed to have joined their company. Two years ago, my good friend, the distinguished president of the American Broadcasting Company, Robert Kintner, was deservedly honored by this very <laughs> committee for having the courage and the good sense to recognize the absurdity of various ill-founded allegations that that well-known figure, Gypsy Rose Lee, had something she wished to conceal. <laughs> Mr. Kintner thus pointed a useful lesson, that where there is smoke, there need not necessarily be a fire, but just a smoke machine, or perhaps a vote machine. The irrational fears and emotions that psychiatrists tell us are the usual product of the tensions under which we all live these days do not make easy the job of those reporters who conceive it their duty to keep looking through the smoke to see whether it comes from a fire or whether it's just spewed out by these smoke machine operators burning their trash and their rubbish. And if there are those who think this an inconsequential duty, they might usefully remember that one freedom which the great Chief Justice Holmes denied to even the most passionate libertarians when he wrote this, no one has the right to yell fire in a crowded theater. Reporters who try to make people aware of those who would arrogate to themselves this dangerous kind of right, which Justice Holmes decried, are more often criticized than rewarded. And for that reason, I sincerely hope that this honor from my fellow fire wardens of the Peabody Board will constitute an encouragement to reporters everywhere to report what they see and exactly as they see it. And I can think of no more useful service a reporter can perform. 